Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at a, prob a senior history problem called Gates. It's from 2015's UC exam. Uh, in my opinion, it is not hard. As long as you get the trick, it is easy. So first I can read the questions and we're going to solve it together. For your birthday, you were given an airport. Oh, that is nice. The airport has three gates, number from 1 to G. P planes arrive at, at the airport one after another. You are, are to assign the S plane to permanently dock at any gate if uh, 1 to GI. At which no previous plane has docked. So, an uh, unavailable dock. As soon as the plane cannot dock at any, at any gate, the airport is shut down and no future plane are allowed to arrive. Uh, pretty important to uh, notice so let's highlight it no it doesn't work in order to keep oops in order to keep the person you give use the airport happy you would like to maximize the number of planes starting from the beginning uh, that can all dock at different gates Input specification. The first line of input contains G, the number of gates at the airport, number of gates, and the second input is P, the number of planes. And next P lines, so it is more than one line, contains one integer, which is GI, such that as plane must dock as some gates between G1 to GI inclusive. Output specification, it just helps with the number of the maximum planes you can dock. I'm gonna scroll down so you can see. And uh, we're gonna use this in uh, sample one to explain you. Just give me one second. So, suppose we have an airport have uh, which has four dock. It is stated in the first line of input, four dock. And the second line is three, uh, three. It means there are three planes gonna dock in the airport or trying to dock in the airport. So let's say uh, we have an area here means sky. Sky and uh, on the sky we have uh, p planes, and each plane has a number of gi. So in this case, there are three planes and uh, one with four, two with one. So uh, what is the number of each plane means is that plane can dock at any gate between 1 to Z number. So for 4, it can dock at 1, 2, 3, 4. For 1, it can only dock at 1 to 1. And sorry, not 1 to 1, it's 1 to 1, which is just 1. And 1, another 1. So to in this situation, to dock as many as planes we can, we will end up something like this. So 1 airplane and here and uh, maybe the airplane of four just at any number between two or four that's the only possible way since the one is already taken then our third plane cannot dock at the airport so our maximum num num equals to so that's our output as well so remember I mentioned if you get a trick this question is easy so feel free to pause the video and to try to come up with um, an approach to solve this problem so okay I assume you have tried at least so I'm gonna tell you the trick the trick is we try to search for an empty spot from GI 
for each plane. So if our plane is has a g of three, then we try to search uh, an empty spot from dock three to dock one. If we have four, then we just search empty spot from uh, four to one. So what if four is already taken, three already taken, and uh, we got a plane that has g of four? Then we check four. Uh-uh, not possible. Three? Uh-uh, not possible. Then we just go to two. Yes. And uh, this plane is just going to park at this position. Why we are uh, trying to search from GI to zero is we are trying to save us some dock or spa uh, space for maybe uh, planes with less or, or lower GI. What if they only have one? It means that plane can only dock at this position, or when we have a number, uh, a bigger GI, we are trying to, uh, sorry, so let me try to explain this. If we have a G2 and a G4, GI equals to 2 and GI equals to 4, we can clearly see that GI equals to 4 have more uh, options. So let's just take uh, not to uh, compete or I don't know, it's like not to take spot for those uh, planes have less GI. So it will be not nice and uh, maybe jeopardize the chance of getting a uh, higher number of planes in the airfield. So whenever we have a number, we just try to search from GI to zero instead of zero to GI. So, wait, so it's kind of like selfish. And this one is smart. Actually, this is not good. We just like, we just try to, yeah, just try to be nice. So let's try to uh, put our uh, bring thoughts to actual code. Let's open up, up our IDE. Oops, didn't open it. So my code here for this problem is in C++ and uh, I really recommend you to use this language since it has better performance and uh, sometimes it is essential to get a perfect score for a problem that is in similar uh, competition. But I believe you can also use Java or Python to solve this question. Uh, so if you are not familiar with C++, uh, I suggest you to continue watching because what matters is the main idea or the our thinking process. So you can write out your own solution with whatever language you prefer uh, after watching this video maybe. So let's start. So the first two lines is just like casual C++ stuff and uh, if you're not familiar you don't need to care it. And, uh, I just initialize two variable g and p integers uh, and as you can speculate the g means uh, the number of dock and p means number of airplane and uh, I also created two uh, vectors airports I mean all the docks and uh, because it's, it is a, a vector of boolean so it represents uh, if a dock is available for airplane or is a dock is empty so if, if it is false then it is empty and if it is true then it means it is not empty so by the way vector in C++ is very similar to maybe ArrayList in Java so just treat it as Java if you are not familiar with C++ 
So in the main class, I just scan all the inputs here, and uh, I set my airport to a boolean, uh, sorry, boolean vector that has size of p plus one because our uh, airport actually start from one to p, so uh, it has to be p plus one, so we don't need to exceed, exceed it or make change to each plane's gi, just to make it easier, and. Uh, since we don't have a dot zero, then we just mark zero true, which means uh, zero is not available or full. So we create a counter, and it just uh, count how many planes can land on the air airport at the end. So for each airplane, I initialize a boolean code has. It means has a, a or the air has. A, does the airport has a free spot for the airplane and uh, initially it's false and uh, in this for loop we are trying to to find that free spot so we start from gi and then we just travel to one uh, and uh, if g uh, if airports i index is false it means it is empty then we set it to full and uh, has to true it means we can land our airplane at uh, a certain spot. Then we break. We are no longer needed to ex uh, to continue the for loop. So, at the end of each iteration of a for loop, uh, the outer for loop, we can check if our plane can land on the airport. If it couldn't, if it not can, if it cannot, then we just gonna break because remember uh, our our airport has to be shut down when it cannot handle even a single airplane for landing and uh, after that we're just gonna go through each boolean variable of the airport to see if it is taken and uh, if it is taken then we just increment our counter by one and uh, at the end we just output counter minus one. Oh, by the way why we minus one here is because uh, yeah, because the zeros index is true, but in reality, the year zeros index, uh, sorry, the first index for index zero, doesn't even exist. We created it just to make our life easier. So we're just gonna minus one as the end, and uh, that's it. So let's try to run our program. Uh, sorry, try to run our sample. The sample is four, three, four, one, one. And as you can see two, it confirms with it. So let's try to run the code in the online grader. Compiling shouldn't take too long. So far so good. And as you can see, all the test case passes, it means our algorithm work. So I'm going to do some final conclusion uh, before I end this video. So for this video, I think the key is to capture the trick of uh, searching uh, the free spot from the highest option or the largest option available. So it can save us save, save up some space for the uh, planes that have like fewer options uh, so th that's about it and the rest of uh, the algorithm is pretty simple so I hope you can understand this problem after watching this video or learn anything from this video so thank you for watching bye